So this is an extremely long story, but I really need advice. I have been with my husband a total of eight years, four years dating and four years married. When we were dating, I'm not going to lie, I was not the nicest, not intentionally, but still aware when he brought it up. I would get mad over stupid stuff and just have a bad attitude towards him. And I've iced him out several times. Mind you, he is super non-confrontational. He was honestly such an amazing man towards me, even till this day, but would just do things that were annoying. This is my first real relationship and first time living with a man at a young age. Anyways, fast forward to eight months ago. I found out that he had cheated on me when we got into two really big fights. Once with a girl, and then two years later with another girl, three times back to back while we weren't speaking. When I found this out, I was obviously extremely heartbroken and upset because I am finding this out while we are married, and I feel like it should have been told before. Our marriage, mind you, had been completely amazing. He said he stopped completely and hasn't done anything since being engaged and especially married. I asked him why he did it, and he said he felt so disrespected by me, and he was at his complete lowest breaking point. In our two fights, I told him I was done with him, although we still lived together and never actually separated. He said that he felt unloved by me and like a weirdo because it was him always trying to fix things, especially with intimacy. Mind you, I'm really and truly not a super intimacy person. But he overall just felt like I didn't love him the way he did me and he just mentally checked out. So I asked him, why didn't he just leave me then? And he said, because he loved me so much and didn't want to make me a single mom. I asked him if he was emotionally attracted to the girls and he said absolutely no. He just felt lonely and unattractive and he thought that maybe he was the problem. So I guess he wanted validation. When hearing this, I was so heartbroken because I do love him, but I know I didn't reflect that in the proper way I should have, and I take full accountability for how my attitude towards him was. I was young and immature, and I didn't know how to properly speak to a man, was raised in a single-parent household, and even when my mom got married, their relationship was toxic. I completely know that I was wrong, and I did change drastically when we got married, and he did too. He also didn't believe in God when we were dating and said right when he started to read his Bible and learn more about it was when he stopped and realized he needed to prioritize his family. The problem is that it's been eight months and I can't find myself to forgive him. I told myself I would never be with someone who cheated on me, but this situation is so different from the typical because A, it happened years ago, B, it happened when we were dating and not in the marriage, and C, I actually to a certain extent understand why he did it and truly believe that if I didn't treat him the way I did, he wouldn't have done it. I just am having a hard time accepting it and it plays over in my head constantly and it's been exhausting and like torture. Am I crazy for not being able to forgive him so easily? I am on the verge of not wanting to be with him anymore because of how betrayed I feel. I feel like this should have been spoken about prior to marriage and especially at the fact that we had two more kids after in the marriage. Because of how strongly I feel about cheating, I feel like I had my choice taken away from me in regards to marrying him. And now the past has been brought into a happy marriage and I feel like it's crumbling on my end. He has been super open and honest with every detailed question I've asked and has taken full responsibility for what he did but I'm finding it so hard because he's really and truly an amazing man, husband, and father. But I'm having a hard time separating what he did when we were dating from the man he is in general. I never thought he would do something like that, and now I feel stuck and confused because I don't know what to do. Am I crazy for staying or crazy for wanting to leave? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I think my concern here is that the way he is dealing with conflict is untrustworthy. He needs to go to therapy because it's never a one-sided issue with cheating. I understand the need to take your responsibility, and it sounds like you have, but he also chose to be there. This means he has his own childhood wounds, and if he's not dealing with them, then situations like this happen, he has a voice and can use it. You can still feel betrayed and not have trust in something. 
He didn't tell you, never planned on telling you, and now wants everything to be okay? Nope. He needs to repair this time. Comment 2. I say get yourselves to therapy as soon as possible. I think this is above Reddit's pay grade. You are completely in the right to feel the way you do, and if I were you, I probably would be equally conflicted. Can you forgive him and move on? That's something only you can decide for yourself. But I think therapy, both individual and couples, would help you untangle the mess a bit and would help you to get to a place where you are at peace, whether that is together and moving past this or on your own separate ways. Hoping for the best. Now for the update, I'm not gonna go over everything that happened before. Just scroll down if you want to read it. But basically, my husband cheated on me before we got married and I was trying to figure out if I wanted to work through it with him or leave him. It's been three weeks since my last update and in that time, a lot has changed, and I mean a lot. We had gotten back to some kind of normal, if that was even a thing. He was still trying to make things right, and I was trying to figure out what right even meant for me. But then about a week ago, it all started to change. He started acting distant again. He was working late more often and spending more time on his phone. I could feel something was off, and I didn't want to jump to any conclusions, but he was definitely hiding something. I had no proof, but I just knew. Then one evening, I was hanging up his jacket that he left on the floor like a toddler, and I found a receipt in the pocket for a hotel stay from a week prior. I recognized the name immediately. It's the kind of place that offers privacy and discretion, if you know what I mean. Couples go there for a reason, and it's not to play Monopoly, if you get what I'm saying. So I asked him about it, he said it was a business meeting that ran late. But his nervousness was so obvious, I could feel it. Something was up, and I knew it. I decided to do a little digging of my own, so I started asking his colleagues about the meeting. One of them, a nice guy, mentioned a dinner event that night that contradicted my husband's story. He was obviously flustered when I confronted him again, and he was super defensive and avoided eye contact like a kid who just got caught stealing candy. I had a family dinner scheduled for the weekend, and it was a pretty big deal. My parents, siblings, and their spouses were all coming over. It was the first time my whole family was meeting him since everything went down. I thought it would be a good time to talk to them about what was going on. On the day of the dinner, my younger sister, Kate, mentioned seeing him at the hotel. She said she was there for a spa day with friends and saw him in the lobby. The tension was so high and my husband's face went white. She casually asked him what he was doing there if he was supposedly working late. He fumbled through his explanation, saying he was meeting a client or something. My dad chimed in, saying he was concerned about my husband's behavior. My husband started getting really agitated, insisting that everyone was misunderstanding. Everyone was silent and I could feel the heat in the room. He wanted to talk about it, just the two of us, after the dinner. I didn't want to, but I felt like I had to keep the peace with the family there, so I agreed. After dinner, though, I didn't want to go home with him. I just felt like it would be too much of a performance to keep up, so I told him I was going to stay at my sister's place for the night. He followed me outside, demanding to know why I was upset. I told him he knew why I was upset, but he tried to brush it off, saying it was just a misunderstanding. Then he got frustrated, stormed back inside, and left me standing there. I went back to the table, and the atmosphere was so tense. I told my family that I believed my husband was hiding something. They all looked shocked, and then questions started flying around the table. My husband finally snapped, accusing me of making a scene and embarrassing him. My mom tried to mediate, but he refused to back down. Then he exploded, shouting that everyone was overreacting and I was crazy. After that, he left in a rage, slamming the door behind him. The next day, I contacted a divorce lawyer for an initial consultation. I didn't want to jump into anything, but I needed to know what my options were. I was at my sister's house when he returned home later that day. He acted as if nothing had happened, but he was clearly stunned. He started pleading for a chance to explain, but I stood firm. I just couldn't go through that again, not in that moment. I didn't say anything else, just told him I needed some time. Honestly, I was just so exhausted. 
My final move was to change the locks while he was out. I told my sister and she helped me with it. She was super supportive and understood why I wanted to take that step. I just felt like I needed to do something to regain a little bit of control over my life. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Just trying to figure out what to do next. Edit, it's been a couple of days since I last posted. My husband has been trying to contact me nonstop. He's left messages, called my sister, and even emailed my work. He just wants to talk and clear the air. My family has been supportive and helped me set more boundaries. My siblings and I have been spending time together to help me distract myself. I'm still in the early stages of figuring out my options and what I want for the future. It's a bit overwhelming, but I'm getting through it. Am I the idiot for wanting to move back home after my wife chose her parents over our marriage? I am a 50-year-old man seeking some perspective. I met my now wife, a 49-year-old woman, 10 years ago. We moved in together five years ago and got married last year. I have three adult children from a previous marriage, all of whom are living out of state. On the other hand, this is her first marriage and we have no kids of our own. She lived with her parents until we moved in together. Her parents are in their upper 80s, with her mom exhibiting signs of dementia. Since her parents live 30 minutes away from us, our routine for the last four years has been to cook dinner for them. I do the bulk of the cooking and eat with them every day except on Saturdays. We also help out with the maintenance of their house. One month after getting married, my mother-in-law fell and broke her hip. Since her siblings are all older and also living out of state, we became the primary caregivers. We moved in with them and my father-in-law hired certified nursing assistants to care for my mother-in-law in the house when she was discharged from the hospital. My in-laws have no plans to move to a medically assisted facility and want to age in place since they have a beautiful home. The certified nursing assistants are there for a total of 20 hours per day, except during the weekend when my wife and I are off. I cover Sunday and my wife covers Monday. The only time we have together is Saturday. The certified nursing assistants work a total of 116 hours per week. They only provide assistance and nothing else. The certified nursing assistants are there in the morning when we are at work and in the evenings so we can sleep. My father-in-law is considering cutting the certified nursing assistant assigned in the evenings since my mother-in-law is much better and we are living with them. My wife and I do everything from shopping, cooking, cleaning to yard work. I also contribute to the household expenses. This is not a free living arrangement as I pay for utilities, all the food, and house maintenance. I am not going to lie, the last eight months have been rough. I work in a very stressful job and having only Saturdays to decompress, and I still need to go to our house to take care of that, is not enough. With the new living situation, I get an average of five hours of sleep. The loss of privacy and independence has been on my mind and being exposed to aging parents places a strain on my mental health. I am not trained as a professional caregiver, but I learned to handle bodily excretions and fluids very quickly. My parents are younger, and I know when it's their time, I will be the one to help out. I am the firstborn, and they are still in Central America. While my wife will likely stay in our home in the United States, as she doesn't know the language and will have a hard time adapting to the culture. I wanted to go back to our home in the evenings, but this became a significant argument. She stated that her priority is her parents and that she wants to be in the house with them even while there are certified nursing assistants. She also mentioned potentially retiring early to help her parents. I've asked her to go to counseling with me and she refused, saying I can go home if I like, but she is staying. I understand that she grew up with them and feels it is her responsibility her siblings help out twice a year for two weeks, and both are retired. Part of me wants to go home because of the stress, but if I do, I know she'll be upset and say that I am not a good husband since we're married and should be together. I make more money, and if she retires early, it should not be a problem. I just worry that this will put more strain on her. I miss our old life, and I feel once we are done with her parents, it will be my turn with my parents and then it will be me caring for her, as there's a high probability that she'll also have dementia, 
which I would gladly do. I am overwhelmed, and while I admire her loyalty to her parents, I am also jealous of it and the loss of our time together, so I need some perspective. Thank you for reading and letting me vent. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Her dad wants to cancel the certified nursing assistance, but your wife isn't ready to leave? It feels like that should work in a different order. I think you've given a pretty fair compromise, and her being unwilling to even discuss options or go to therapy together to work through this is not helpful. Can her retired siblings come down and give you at least a week off so you two can breathe in your own home and discuss a real plan? While you're both exhausted, you're not going to be able to calmly discuss this. Comment 2. What bothers me is that she acts like they are dying and their time is limited. It's really not, except for my mother-in-law's dementia. Both are able and in good health. Part of me wants to accept the out-of-state work being offered to me, so I have a legitimate reason to not be around and see if she can do it all by herself and hope that she comes to her senses. Now for the update. Two days after the last post, I come home from work and find my wife in the living room with her parents. Her dad is watching TV while her mom is napping on the couch. My wife asks me to help her set up a family dinner for her parents and some relatives. I agree, but feel kind of stressed since I had planned to relax after a long week. We spend hours cooking together, preparing their favorite dishes. While chopping vegetables, I notice my wife frequently checking her phone. She tells me it's nothing, just a text from her brother about dinner plans. I try to focus on the meal, but I can't stop feeling like she's distracted. Dinner night arrives and her brother shows up with his wife and two kids. Everyone is laughing and enjoying themselves, but I feel out of place. During dinner, her brother makes a joke about how I'm not really part of the family yet. My wife laughs, but I don't find it funny. I excuse myself to the kitchen to grab more drinks. While in the kitchen, I overhear her brother asking my wife about her job and if she's thinking of stepping back. My wife responds that she's not sure and that her parents need her right now. I return to the dining room with drinks and it feels tense. I notice the kids are playing in the corner and I feel like I'm missing out on family moments. After dinner, I help clear the table while my wife chats with her mom about retirement plans. I catch snippets of their conversation about needing more help at home. That night, I suggest we should spend a weekend away, just the two of us. My wife brushes it off, saying it's not the right time. We argue quietly, trying not to disturb her parents, but the heat is there. The next day, I decide to take a walk to clear my head. I run into a neighbor who asks how things are going with my in-laws. Later that week, we go to her parents' house for game night. During the games, I notice my wife gets a call and steps outside to take it. I can't hear her conversation, but it feels like she's hiding something. After game night, I ask her about the call and she brushes it off as work-related. She reacts defensively, saying I don't understand the pressure she's under. Over the weekend, we have a family birthday party for her dad. During the party, her brother makes a toast, saying he appreciates how much my wife does for their parents. After the party, I bring up how I feel overlooked in the marriage. My wife tells me I'm being selfish, and it leads to a heated discussion. She accuses me of not supporting her choices and wanting her to choose between her family and me. The argument escalates, and I leave the room, frustrated. A few days later, I find a note from her in the kitchen saying she's going to spend the night at her parents' house. The next day, I get a text from her saying she's not sure how to move forward. I respond, telling her I just want us to find a balance. Mini update. My wife and I continued texting about our situation. I suggested couples therapy, but she felt it was too much on top of everything else. She insisted on taking a break from our apartment to think things through. I understood her need for space, but worried about the future of our marriage. I reached out to some close friends who knew about the situation and got their perspectives, which made me feel less isolated. Am I the idiot for skipping Christmas with my overbearing family and demanding they respect my parenting choices? I am a 30-year-old female, and I am really struggling with how to handle expectations from older family members now that I have my own family. Lately, 
My life has been just a series of issues between myself, my mother who is a 60-year-old female, and a myriad of extended family members of my mother's generation and older. My family has always been pretty matriarchal in nature. The older women set the rules and everyone follows suit. I honestly went along pretty well until I started having kids. Now, everything is a fight and the older generations won't take accountability for anything. Examples. I am very protective over my kids' diets because I was an overweight child raised by someone who was morbidly obese. My parents, both aged 60, insist it was my fault I was overweight throughout elementary and middle school, even though they heavily encouraged and celebrated my eating. Now, almost every time we are together, they try to sneak my kids' sweets or hype up how amazing every dessert is, even when I have explicitly told them we don't make a big deal out of these foods. They have blown me off repeatedly and say I'm too strict. I have told my mother that while I love having her around, I need to have some days alone with my kids. The reason being that when she is around, she tells me everything I'm doing wrong, how filthy my house is, and tries to clean things that I actively tell her not to. If I do call her out for doing these things, she tells me she's trying to help and how I don't appreciate her. So I recently told her I needed a couple of days alone after she was with us for a full week, and she blew up, saying I must be lying to her and that I must need help and couldn't possibly handle my three kids alone. And finally, the straw that broke the camel's back. My husband and I decided over a year ago that we were no longer going to attend a big family gathering on Christmas Day and would instead celebrate with our little family at home. We were happy to offer to see everyone earlier in the month if that would make it easier. We told my mother this plan, and she begged me not to tell her extended family, the ones throwing the party, yet. So out of respect, I said I would hold off for a few months under the condition that she keeps her mouth shut and lets me handle it. Then she turned around a week later and revealed my plan to everyone. Now, I'm getting roasted by a group of women aged 60 and older who are all but demanding I share my holidays with them on their terms and are battering me with stories of how they did whatever they were told to respect their elders. So I need to as well. Realistically, all of this is happening because they want my kids there, and that makes me feel pretty used. I've been putting out these fires left and right, and I just really don't know what to do. So what do I do? How can I get them to respect me as the authority figure over my kids? Do I sit them down and lay down the law? Do I keep putting out fires as they arise and hope eventually it sticks? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you have to accept that they're going to be angry and they're going to guilt you and try shaming you and pestering you and ultimately you are an adult and whether or not you do what they want is your decision. If they can't follow your boundaries, you don't go to the gathering, you don't host your mom, they don't get to see your children. All these things are in your control. It's gonna feel bad when you do it, even though you are right to do it. Don't fall for some nonsense about respect or obedience or family wouldn't do this, etc. Comment two, man, this is straight out of one of the Jerry Wise videos on YouTube about narcissistic parents, especially the Christmas stuff. You have to stand up for yourself and your children and you have to be ready to upset every one of those individuals. You are a matriarch now too, damn it. They need to slide over and make room on the throne. Just memorize these three little magic words. I said no. For special occasions, add a throaty, God damn it. Now for the update. One day after my last post, my mom was on the phone with me, demanding to talk about the Christmas situation. I agreed to meet her at a local diner, thinking it might help ease tensions. Yeah, I know, I know. It's probably more like a family diner than anything else, but whatever. We sit in a booth, and she immediately brings up the family's disappointment over the skipped gathering. I try to explain my need for family boundaries, but she's interrupting me every time I try to talk. It's like, can I just finish a sentence before you hit me with your opinions? Out of nowhere, she accuses me of being selfish for prioritizing my own family. Where's that coming from? We have a waitress come over to take our order, giving us a small break from the heated argument. How nice. After we order, my mom suddenly mentions how Rachel, my sister-in-law, 
has been sharing parenting tips with her. Yeah, Rachel's advice is always fun, right? So naturally, I get a little irritated because her advice often contradicts my own parenting style. I tell my mom that I appreciate these tips but prefer raising my kids my own way. You know, like a normal parent? My mom just brushes this off, insisting that Rachel means well and that I should listen to her. I can't even. I'm just so over this. During the conversation, I get a text from my brother Jake asking if he could bring my kids over for a visit this weekend. I respond with a simple yes, thinking it might ease the tension with my family. Anything to get a break from this nonsense. The conversation shifts to the upcoming family birthday party for my niece, which is being planned for the following weekend. My mom insists that the kids should have sweets at the party, and I'm just like, no, we are not doing this. I try to convince her that it's important to keep the kids' diets in mind, but she's laughing it off like this is some kind of joke. I propose a compromise of healthier options for the party, and she scoffs at me, saying that kids need to enjoy treats at birthday parties. Like, come on, is it really that hard to find a middle ground? The argument escalates, and we're just yelling over each other at this point. I decide to leave the diner, frustrated that nothing is changing. As I'm walking out, my mom yells that I'm ruining family traditions. Yeah, that's right. That's what I want. To ruin family traditions. Back at home, I find my husband sitting on the couch with our kids who are just glued to the TV watching some cartoon. I fill him in on the diner conversation and I can't help but complain about how nothing productive is happening. He suggests that maybe we should just avoid family gatherings for a while. Honestly, I think that's a good idea. A few days later, I get an unexpected message from Rachel, asking to meet up for coffee. At the coffee shop, she brings up the family dynamics and how she feels everyone is struggling. She shares that Jake has been feeling pressured by our parents about starting a family. Like, no kidding, we're all feeling it. It's like a huge weight on our shoulders. Rachel suggests that we organize a family meeting to address everyone's concerns. This is the kind of suggestion we've been waiting for. Honestly, the conversation with Rachel ends with a plan to gather the family after the birthday party. The weekend of the birthday party arrives and the atmosphere is just tense but festive. I notice my mom ignoring my requests for healthier food options at the party. Shocking, right? The party ends with a cake that the kids are eager to dive into, even with my attempts to limit sweets. After the party, I get a call from Jake expressing frustration about our parents' expectations. He feels like they are pressuring him and his girlfriend to settle down and start a family. I'm just over here like, welcome to the club, buddy. I agree with him, and we both vent about how our parents are being. He thinks our parents are trying to take advantage of our lack of kids to force us into their way of living. He brings up how our parents used to be fun and easygoing, but now they're so uptight about everything. I'm just at a loss for words. Mini update. The family meeting went down after the birthday party. Everyone aired out their grievances, and it was quite the eye-opener. Our parents admitted they felt left out of our lives. We reached a compromise where they'd respect our parenting choices, but we also invited them to be involved in our kids' lives. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.